so long for how we can tell candidates that in this election we want it closed. You never hear about it any more than it, it takes money to do it. Congress refuses to appropriate money. That is, that, that, is that, is, that, is, that is the answer. That is the answer. Ask and answer. So the say. president tried to close it. The Congress, he tried to transfer the prisoners here. He, that was a campaign promise, and Congress said we won't pay for it. What's he going to do? Put it on his credit card? <laughs> I mean, how's he going to move the guy? <laughs> All right, another Gerard question, which I love the way it's starts. Nothing against the men on the panel. They're all rock stars for sure. But how can we get more yeah. women like Randy Rhodes on progressive radio? <laughs> You're our chick man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know why Stephanie and I can't procreate, right? <laughs> so you're going to have to make your own is what, what you're going to have to do. Thank you. That's really fun. Okay, no. So. <laughs> you make your own. There's, there's you want a... me to make them? <laughs> okay, let me, let, me, let me make a talk show. <laughs> cloning. Cloning. Okay. I saw, a, I, I hope you're here, there's a woman who was writing uh, button slogans, and they're hysterical. They, they were for sale out there. Are you, where are you? No, you are hysterical. She has a button out there, what did it say? It said, uh, don't tell me I came from your rib. Uh, you came from my vagina. <laughs> The Green Party's Green New Deal for America has everything a good progressive supports. If I vote for them, am I throwing my vote away? We're building for the future. I'll be happy to jump in on that one because I've made that an issue. Uh, it's gotten me in a lot of trouble. There is a thing called the Vermont Progressive Party. You can find them on the internet. I spoke at their state convention last November, and I've had them on the show, and I will continue to have them. And in fact, Jill Stein, the Green Party candidate for president, will be on my show this coming Wednesday at 3.30 in the afternoon. I believe, and I know this is a very unpopular thing to say, that the National Democratic Party is Republican light. They're half the fact head of our regular Republicans. And I I'm sorry, but you know, I know Pat will back me up here, that when you are settling a lawsuit, it's about leverage. If you've got a strong case, and the other side knows that you're going to take them to a trial and beat the stuffing out of them, you're going to get a very favorable settlement. If you have a weak case, the other side knows that, and you're going to get a bad settlement. Your kids, when they're little kids, they're negotiating with you. They say, Mommy, can I have a glass of water? Now I the bathroom. You know, it's, it, there's always something. Kids know how to negotiate. They have leverage. They can annoy the hell out of you until you let them if they want. It's a skill that we forget as we get older. But it's all about leverage. And sadly, the National Democratic Party takes us for granted. Rahm Emanuel says, where's the left going to go? And they found out in 2010 when, when we let, went to the couch and didn't get off. And they got their heads handed to them, and the message they took was, oh, you need to be more like the Republicans. Like, that great I, idea. I don't, I don't think so, you need to reinvent. Uh, well, let me just, I don't think you need to put some leverage on Well, here, here, here's the leverage. Here's the leverage. If you were to describe what's happened in the Democratic Party, you have what I heard the term Rubenite. So you've got the pro-Wall Street types that all, all of us are offended by. And then you have true progressives. You have people like everybody in this audience that understands that there's some things that we don't negotiate. There's some things we don't give up on. And what we've forgotten is that we have an infrastructure, okay? The infrastructure is a Democratic Party. It has just been temporarily taken over by the wrong people. Because what we think, what we think, except the people in this room, is that the cavalry's coming, okay? Somebody's going to show up and they're going to pull the sword out of the stone and they're going to show us real leadership. And again, we're going to have those wonderful days, those FDR days, when we were proud of what the Democrats stood for, when we changed people's lives in such a positive way that we were, we were proud. We still feel that pride today, don't we, when we think of the FDR years. 
If that hasn't escaped us, it's only escaped us if we say, well, the way to do this is to come up with some third new party. What we have to do is we have to simply take control back of the party. And the, what I mean when I say the cavalry is not coming, you've heard me say this so many times if, you, if you've listened to the show, is we're raised on this idea of watching westerns where the bandits have the good guys pinned down. The wagons are turned over, bullets are flying, hell, they're out of water, no food. They're in their last desperate effort and the cavalry comes over the hill. Bugles blaring, flags in front of them. We grew up with that, didn't we? And we believe in our heart, we've been, we've been programmed to believe that the cavalry's coming. They're not. They're not coming. The cavalry is not going to save the Democratic Party. It's you. You're the cavalry. You're the cavalry. And so what I'm suggesting is we don't give up. We don't give up on something that we have this infrastructure. We, we try to make it better. The, the way to make the Democratic Party, there are two ways to make the Democratic Party the real Democratic Party. One is to do what Pat and Tom has talked about, which is infiltrate and run in the primaries, which is the Grover Norquist Koch Brothers way. You say, you're either going to do what we want or we're going to primary you and kick you out, which I think is wonderful. And I encourage everybody, if you listen to the show, I'm always saying, I think you sound like a marvelous member of the House of Representatives. Now I'm encouraging people to run, get involved. But the other way to do it is to look at the Democratic Party and say, here's this other group. Now, you're either going to give us a real Democrat for this race, whether it's the House or a state Senate, state assembly, or we're going to run somebody against you. We will intentionally split the vote, and we will sink your sorry ass because you're not worth a damn. And when, when you've done this a few times, maybe you'll take us seriously, and you'll start giving us real Democrats, and we won't have to have a third party. We won't have to have a third party as leverage, as a threat. And I suggest those two things can happen simultaneously, I, and I think we're going to get to it. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry. Yeah. No, I, I was going to... I was going to talk to you about the primary, primary idea. I think all, all politics is local. And, you know, people sort of throw away these congressional races or their city council races. And you know how important it is. I mean, we all now see everything that happens happens locally. And so primarying somebody who is just, you know, pretending to be a Democrat because they looked at a demographic chart and said, oh, this uh, Seattle area seems to be, you know, so I'll be a Democrat, but has no heart of a Democrat or no brain of a Democrat or no soul of a Democrat, and doesn't care about his constituents or doesn't care about anything except where are they going to call to dial for dollars for the net. Primary them, you know, primary them. Just put somebody up against them and knock on doors and be in the supermarket parking lots and, and let people mock you and say, well, you don't have enough money. I'm going to show you. 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 And keep on doing it until, just like the Tea Party, made their presence known. These Republicans are terrified. And they're a bunch of wackadoodles. I mean, they're, 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 they're not even professional about what they're saying or doing, are they? They're just, they're, they, they have no experience serving, which is fine. If, if it works for them, it should work for us. Uh, other than that, the only, the only, the, listen, every time I talk about this, I always say, hey, you know, in dictatorships, you only get one choice. That's all you get is one choice. Here, in democracy, we get two. <laughs> all right, we're going to have to take an intermission, but Sam, do you want to jump in? I just want to finish this thought. Yeah. I, it would be great to have three parties, four parties, five parties, and the only way to do that is to get rid of the Electoral College. That's the problem. I think uh, Norman's formula is, is, is a good one, but it, it, you know, it's also a notion of overplaying your hand. And we're not at the point, and frankly, the Green Party has not, over time, proven that they can build a sustained movement. And that's the problem. Right. Um, and so I think the value of having Jill Stein on, or having Rocky Anderson on, uh, or bringing these other candidates on to talk about the, uh, the issues that are being left on this on the side of the table. But if you're in a swing state, the dynamic that you're talking about is just no one buys it. it you're, you, their movement is not strong enough to have that leverage, and there is a notion that you can overplay your hand. And that's the problem. And when you do have the infrastructure there, it's not just a question of primary people, it's literally putting people on, and I think Tom, you talked about this quite a bit, getting people in on these nominating committees on a local level that you sit there, and, they, and they, it's a much, uh, a sh smaller hill to climb to take over a local nominating process than it is introducing a third party into our system. The precinct, the precinct committee people.
many of you can volunteer to become are the ones who do two really important things. They choose all the people who are running the primary, and they write the platform for the party. And it's almost, in almost every state, every precinct all over the country, it, it's mostly volunteers. And, and very often they go unfilled. And that's the Tea Party, you know, the, 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 uh, the, the, the Concord Coalition produced a whole series of YouTubes that the, that the Tea Party used nationwide. You can still find them there on their website about how the committee precinct people are the most powerful political figures in America. They are. And, 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 and if we Tea Partiers take over the precinct committee chairs in individual Republican districts, and there's gonna be five people in the primary, and all five of them are Tea Partiers, it doesn't matter who wins, the Tea Party wins. Right. And that's exactly what they did, and it's what we should do. Let me We're going to mark this time for when I officially lost control. But Ron, <laughs> <laughs> Ron goes real quick, and then we're short. Norm raised a very important point here, but we, we need to recognize that one of the problems with the Democratic Party right now is that it's bought into the paradigm presented by the Republican Party. A real Democratic Party would not be a party that supports a military empire. A real Democratic Party would not be arguing over the suitability of the Republicans' health care plan. Which is what Obamacare actually is. They would have fought for universal single care, even if it was not. A real Democratic Party would not buy the too big to fail paradigm and desist from putting people in prison who do these things because crime is not going to stop it. Jail time will. So there are a lot of these things that a real Democratic Party would not buy into, and yet, they accept the paradigm and they start operating from that paradigm instead of saying, no, 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 the whole picture is wrong. We, we've got to leave the frame all together. We will start part two talking about the real Democratic Party, but we're going to take an intermission. Uh, I want to let you know there are the outsiders' tables set up by sponsors. Make sure to stop by the Don Willis Furniture Table. There's a really cool chair.